Okay, we are going to take a look at cable routing today. As you know, we've gone ahead and located our equipment, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. Uh, let's just do the electrical equipment for right now, and I'm going to just bring in the power. Oh, let's bring in all of the trays. And you'll remember that the um, cable tray service levels are identified by different colors. And I don't see a green one in there. The blue is medium voltage. The cyan is low voltage. And the instrument is going to be in green. Okay, so there are all of our cables. Uh, there are all of our cable trays and the uh, little nodes. I'm going to zoom in on this area right here. Little nodes that you see here are our um, end devices. So let's find out what these three are. Let's select these three end devices right here and we're going to go ahead and show and tag them. Uh, Y'all remember that the tags in Traumatic are just dumb text, so we can just kind of move them around as we want. But this is pump 410A, B, and C. Okay. Now let's get a list of the cables that are associated with those pumps, and I'm going to zoom back out. And we're also going to take a look at where those are sourced from. Uh, by clicking this button, it gives me a list of all of the related raceways and termination boxes that are associated with these cables. So that identifies the two motor control centers. So let's go ahead and re-tag those. And you can see MCC301 and MCC203. Okay. Now that that's done, I'll take this list of cables and go over to Cablematic. And we're going to batch route, put this out of the way. I'm going to batch route the cables that are in my clipboard. Uh, this is all of the default settings. I'm just going to leave those as they are for right now. And it went ahead and routed those six cables. And I'm coming up with cable routes somewhere between 73 and 95 feet on uh, those particular runs. Okay, so now that we've routed those cables, let's see what they look like. I'm going to go ahead and show, this is my cable section. Again, this is the equipment section, the raceway section, the cable section. And I'm going to show those cable routes and the raceways that they are. You know, you can see them in the raceways uh, coming from the motor control center. And it will identify the MCT. If I can get the AutoCAD to zoom. It's going through MCTP 5136. So it's, it's also showing that. Let's take a look at one cable. If I clear my list here and select a particular cable, doesn't matter which one. I can hit this button again, and that's going to tell me that it's going from MCC203 to pump 4110B. And this is the list of raceways that it's actually following. I have the ability then to highlight those raceways. <coughs> so you can now see a little bit clearer exactly the path, exactly which raceways our cable is taking. Flip it back to plan view, and it makes it a little easier to follow. Okay. Let's clear this list. And let's select our motor control center. And let's get a list of all of the cables that are either sourced from or terminating in. This is a complete list of every cable that is in our uh, cable schedule that is associated with MCC203. Again, I can copy this list. And go back over to 
my Cablematic batch route. And I've got a larger list this time. And in this case, if you notice it said that two of the cables failed. There are 23 cables in our list. Of those 23, I've got route lengths on 21, but these two didn't route. And it's going to tell me why in the error message. It's going to say there is no exit raceway, but there's an XYZ available. So that's for generator 300A and 300B. Or GEN uh, copy selected cells. Let's go find out what's going on with those guys. Um, again, I love cool tools. I can erase the cable view and uh, clears my screen. I can clear my table list here and paste what happened? There we go. Okay. GEN 300 A and B. Copy and paste. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and show and tag those two. Uh, got a space in there. There we go. So the error message told us that these two, it knows where these two uh, uh, end devices are, but there's not a dropout or a path from the cable tray system to those um, end devices. So let's go take a look at that. And you'll remember from our previous uh, uh, sessions how to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again anyway. Let's go to tail ends. Uh, it's a... Okay, it's a dropout. Uh, dropout, as you know, is a field route. I can automatically route it to the closest tray, or I can pick the tray that I want to route it to. But let's go ahead and do it the easy way. Let the computer find the shortest route, and I'm going to go ahead and route this one as well. Now, we've added new raceways to our database, to our Traymatic database. If I was starting Cablematic, it would automatically synchronize, but since I've got the program already running, I'm going to go to Advanced Tools, and I'm just going to go ahead and force it to sync. I'm going to execute a sync so that the cable routing database will now know that there are two additional conduit dropouts. Those are the two that we just added. And again, as I said, if you just started the program, every time you start either Cablematic or Traymatic, it will check and synchronize for you automatically. The only time that you have to do this is when you are in the uh, inside of both programs simultaneously, which happens frequently when we're doing uh, uh, when we're doing cable routing. Okay, let's go back to Cool Tools and let me. Take these two cables, copy, and batch route those two. Now remember, these are the two that failed last time, but now we've got a route, so now we've got those two cables to actually route. And real quick, I'd like to see them. I'm used to working on two screens, so this is a little bit, uh, a little bit more cumbersome than what I'm used to. And remember, we've got the raceways highlighted from the last time. You can unhighlight the raceways. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing that right now. I just want to show the route just to show you that these two can be um, can be routed or have been routed, and you can you can see and verify the route if you'd like. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool, but as you can probably tell me real soon. Yeah, that's just a couple cables. What about what about what do you do when you got a whole bunch of cables? Let's go find out. Let's go to spreadsheet data and let's take this list of all the cables in our cable schedule. 567 sounds like a good number to me and copy those into our um, into our clipboard. 
and let's go batch route and see what it can do and again I'm using a list of cables in my clipboard I could actually you just route all of the cables in the database at once I could have done it that way you would think that routing 567 cables would take some time it really doesn't take a whole lot of time and as you can see the cable routing tool is very quick it is also check and tray fill as it goes to ensure that because that was one of the defaults that we that we took so that ensures that we will not have a, a tray overfill issues if it did overfill a tray we could force it to put cables in an overfill tray and then highlight the tray to identify which one was overfilled and in about two minutes here it's going to be finished routing my 567 cables okay and there they are this is the list of all of the cables that got routed <coughs> it's got the route lengths um, now that this information is available we can go to our design reports and we can get a list of all of our cables and I want the route length in my cable report and I want the uh, route in my cable report so I'm going to go ahead and create the report this is the program out of the box cable report as you all know we've customized one to um, to report out in Excel in exactly the format that our project is is requiring that customization is uh, uh, I don't want to say it's easy but it's it's doable it's not extremely difficult it's just one of the things that you need to be aware of and uh, we can work with you on it it's not it's not very difficult to um, accomplish okay now we're looking at a control cable here it's a three conductor 14 going from and to it's 127 feet long this is the cable uh, tray or the raceways that it is occupying and it is a random lay in other words it is it is laid uh, uh, in in a bundle and if we go down to some of the bigger cables and I'm going to scroll a little quickly here to get past I don't want to get to the power cables because the power cables are going to be a little bigger wow I did say we had 567 cables didn't I Okay, here we go. Here's the three conductor four aught. And as you know, those cables cannot be bundled. Those need to be single layer, and the program knows that. It's identifying that the cable is installed on single layer. Also, I'd like to point out that since this cable was originated in Loadmatic, the motor control center section and actually the the bucket uh, 09M is reported for each cable that is sourced by or that is originated by Loadmatic so that's just a little extra added feature now if you recall our generator feeders uh, in, in order to get a little bit extra opacity we also left a one cable diameter space here here's one of them to our essential generator this is actually the uh, uh, the power junction box from the switch gear to the temporary generated junction box we've got three con three conductor 250s this is a single layer but the program also knows that it is spaced and it accounts for that in its tray fill calculations there are actually five per phase so that's dash three four dash five and all of them have been uh, uh, accounted for and calculated okay take a look at tray fill and I want to get a list of the cables that are contained in each uh, in each cable tray and I do not want the program to resize it I could it doesn't matter if I click yes or no because when we put in our raceways we locked the size we want to control the size of our trays we do not want the program to resize trays for us but this particular cable tray I5170 is 40 feet long it is 69 percent full based on section 392-22A2 of the National Electrical Code and here's a list of all of the cables that are routed in that tray or in that tray segment 44% and these are instrument cables so they're all going to have the same code section 
again let me scroll down to the low voltage tray uh, here's a medium voltage tray okay this is this is uh, uh, the medium voltage cable is routed in per section 392-22c um, it is 57 percent full and I want to get down into the power cables because I want to point out something else. Here's a case where we have some cables that are smaller than 4 aught and some that are larger than 4 aught or possibly even uh, uh, 250 kc mill that would need to be spaced. So it would be applied different sections of the code to uh, separate those cables. So you've got a 22A1B and section 11. There are actually two sections of code that are used to calculate this tray at 80% full. And if you recall, we set the tray fill at 20% uh, spare capacity, so no additional cables would be routed in this tray unless we unchecked the allow overfill box. We can we can allow it to do that, but uh, we, we've set up the program to stop filling cables, uh, stop filling trays at 80%. So that is the tray fill report. Our material takeoffs, we can get a list of our cables, and I'm going to go ahead and show you this is the last one, and then we're going to let you go do some, uh, some exercises. In this case, we've got a single pair number 16. There are, we have 7,629 feet of single pair number 16. There are actually 88 runs, uh, or 88 cables that use that particular cable spec. And if we scroll down to some of the bigger cables, a three conductor 250s, we've got 4,300 feet of that. There are 39 cables that have that uh, in our cable schedule that have that particular spec. So this gives you the, the number of cable runs you have as well as the total length of cables. So it's just another one of the uh, material takeoff reports that's available in the software. Okay. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording now and allow you all to, uh, uh, to, to practice some of the techniques that we just demonstrated.